Ladies and gentlemen, it's just one of the interwebs out there, Sebastian Envy, strong style, Sinop, file and star girl. It's another great, great episode. Let us geek about it for a scant few minutes. Now this episode opens up with a flashback to just the, the, the moments right after the JSA, well, a couple of members of the JSA, teamed up to take out Bruce Gordon because they thought that to stop Eclipso, they had to kill the host bearer of Eclipso, which was Bruce Gordon. They went, they took him out. It was a split vote. Um, they took him out, and now we're seeing some of the fallout from it. We heard some of the fallout from it in the last episode. They split up. They got back together when the JSA, when the ISA formed, and that's pretty much kind of why they were taken out so easily, or at least you can kind of infer that that's why they were taken out so easily, so completely, because they just weren't a team anymore. They weren't coordinated. They weren't, who knows if they went their separate ways and just weren't talking, you know? I mean, this is your brother in arms uh, that you fought alongside for years, but then something happens. You um, don't see each other the same anymore. You don't have the same relationship. You don't have that same rapport, and you get taken out by the bad guys. That's, that's what we infer what happened. And in the last video, of the last episode, I kind of wondered because they just, every flashback we see with Pat and JSA, mostly Sylvester, they kind of treat them like, a, like they're dicks to him. And I kind of wondered, okay, why does this dude stay around these people? They treat him like dicks, yeah? Um, and then we kind of get a little bit of the why, which I love this show. It kind of sets, it sets things up, gives you questions, and then it gives you a payoff. So didn't even have to wait that long for the payoff. We see in this flashback how much Pat meant to Sylvester. Uh, Sylvester sees him as a brother. He taught him um, sort of some of the core values and stuff that he has as a man. Sees him like a brother, um, someone to look up to. And maybe those kind of, those types of gentle moments that we saw there, maybe there were other moments like that that we haven't seen between Pat and Sylvester, between Pat and some of the other members of the JSA, which is why he stayed around. I can buy into that. I can kind of let my mind extrapolate things from there and think that, and it kind of justifies why he's still there. So I was like, oh, I had a question. Why does he stay around? People, they treat him like dicks. This is why, because maybe they didn't treat him like a dick all the time. Cool, that's what I love about the writers. They set up something and they pay it off. The rest of this episode was dealing with fallout from uh, Courtney finding out that they lied about what happened with Bruce Gordon and Eclipso back in the day and kind of, Court trying to Court and Pat trying to work through that and that whole mistrust that she has with him, the mistrust she has with her mother, and that sort of thing. And they are told by the Shade, who shows up, that the only way to stop Eclipso is to reform the diamond, which they can't use with staff. So they think he's like only the power of light can restore it. So, oh, Green Lantern, power of light. We got to go find Jenny. Thankfully, there's a trail to find her because there's some fires burning down. Some. Um, orphanages and stuff. It turns out that Jenny is looking to try to find her uh, brother. She ends up at this kind of sketchy looking rehab facility. What exactly they rehabilitate? Not exactly sure. They find her there. Um, find out more information on her, what kind of what she was doing. Her emotions got the better of her. She still doesn't have control over the powers and she ended up burning some stuff down. They take her off with them because they want to use her to put the diamond back together. Meantime, the nurse calls somebody named Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones is a villain, an established villain within the DC universe. He's got an organization behind him called Helix. They do some shady things. Are they kind of just setting the stage for this to be the larger story uh, in season three? Again, I'm, I'm fully confident that's what these writers are doing. They're setting up something, giving us little like nuggets of stuff to kind of let our mind kind of wander on and then they'll pick it up next season or we'll get sort of a kind of a cliffhanger type of thing maybe at the during the little closing moments of the season finale of this season I don't think they'll clutter up things because they already have something strong and something good with a clip so I don't think they'll clutter things up with um, further bones and helix talk this season remains to be seen but I don't think they'll do that I, I, mean, I have trust and faith in these writers they'll give it to us in time it'll be well executed when they do because everything else to this point has been. Other than that, you have Beth is staying at the, or kind of crashing with the, um, at Courtney's house to further kind of research and figure out a way to get Dr. McKnighter out of the Shadowland, which we find that the Shade pulled him into 
in a bid to save him from the ISA, because maybe he's not super bad, uh, which he says. I mean, there's, there's, uh, well, he's not evil. Like, he's bad, but he's not evil. And for whatever reason, he tried to save Dr. McNider from the ISA assault. And um, Beth is hoping that there's a way, you know, Shade can open up the Shadowland, whatever gateway or whatever, and get him out. We find out that back in the day, in the 1800s, and um, the Shade was uh, hired by this organization to get a hold of the diamond. He, he fakes the diamond to give it to them because they're, they've been looking into Eclipso and the supernatural entity that they want to call forth to use uh, against their enemies. So they hire the Shade to get the diamond that will factor into this ritual. He doesn't. He gives him a fake one, but he doesn't realize, oh, they're going to screw me over, double-cross me, and use me in the ritual, which they do. Things got screwed up, and somehow Shade got shadow powers. And we get, like, a little bit of his origin, which, again, was cool. And then come to find out, I mean, a villain is a villain. He's just wanting them to put the diamond back together. It has nothing to do with Eclipso. It will enable him to access his shadow powers and thus heal himself. So maybe, did he want... I guess as long as the diamond is whole, he will have his powers. I mean, he wants the diamond, he wants to do away with it. He wants Eclipso back in the diamond and wants to just, you know, bury it under 10 feet of cement uh, because Eclipso will be taken care of and he'll still have his powers because he's a shade, he's out for himself, he's a bad guy, it's what he does. And then we find out, of course, that summoning, like putting the diamond back together does not do anything to Eclipso but actually summons him to that location. So he shows up at the old JSA place that they go to and Jenny tries to stop him with her power, doesn't do anything. Courtney gets sucked into the Shadowland, which we've seen from the promo um, that uh, Cindy's still alive. Courtney's alive. They're going to have to work together to find a way to get out. So is Cindy going to get out with Courtney? Is Cindy still going to be evil? I saw in like one of the comments on the promo, somebody was like wanting Cindy to get out and be good. Um, I don't know if she goes good in the comics, um, but I just... My answer to that was, I don't need, we don't need everyone to have a redemption story. Just because you like the actor, then this actor for Sydney is, Cindy is good, but just because we don't need everybody to have a redemption story. Just let bad people just be bad. You know, that's, that's just my take on it. Hopefully that's what they do, but it remains to be seen. Again, I trust the writers. They have not steered us wrong to this point, so I trust them and their vision and what they want to do and their execution. I just still have my own desires um, for how I want to see things play out. Outside of that, you had Mike wanting to, again, Mike just wants to do more, be more of a part of things. So he goes to try to repair Stripe, and then he, through the radio, hears some stuff about uh, Pink Lightning and tracks the source, because the source is, of course, the Thunderbolt. He tracks the source to House, which we, uh, we know is going to be uh, Jakeem's house, but we see it's like a gingerbread house, basically. So. Jakeem has found and activated the Thunderbolt and is using him to make wishes, which of course things don't turn out the way, the exact way that they're wished. You gotta be super thoughtful with what you're wishing for or else you get like a gingerbread, gingerbread house. So it remains to be seen how that kind of plays out in the next episode with um, Jakeem and Mike. Is Mike gonna try to get the Thunderbolt back from Jakeem? Is that gonna have some strife between these two guys, which are friends? Um, remains to be seen how that plays out. It was interesting before Beth came over to um, Courtney's house that her parents were kind of, I guess, trying to stage an intervention because they find it weird that she's wearing these goggles all the time, but the goggles let her see through Eclipso's vision, so she wanted to make sure her parents, after she got whammy before, that her parents were actually her parents. And it's kind of, uh, they have this concern and everything for her, and she's kind of like, well, kick rocks, like, too bad, like, you didn't want to tell me about things with your divorce and that sort of thing, so I don't want to tell you what's going on with me. You told me to make friends, I'm gonna go help them. You guys don't need me. You work yourself out. I'm gonna go over here. Um, so it was nice to see Beth kind of, I mean, she's not being rude or anything. I mean, she's just like, just not being so much a doormat like she was before. So we're seeing this growth in Beth that I like and I really enjoy, I want to see it continue. Um, hopefully they do find a way to get McKnighter out or maybe just a better contact between her and McKnighter so she can teach her to be a better Dr. Midnight. Uh, remains to be seen if that plays out. You have Rick still in jail and Solomon Grundy is throwing him apples in jail, which is funny. Is Solomon Grundy going to end up breaking him out? Remains to be seen. Or is he going to start to? And Rick's going to be like, no, chill. I got to be here. 
I can see that being a thing. I'm here for all of it. It was a great episode. Like I said, it was kind of slow. Um, light on the action, which is fine, because it's just, they got to kind of figure out kind of where they want to spend their budget, kind of give, save things away for those larger action-centric episodes. Like we had all that build up to the high school fight, and, and that was great. And now we're kind of in a slow burn again, and it's probably until like the last two episodes, especially the finale. So I'm fine with it. It's a great episode. It's a great development with Beth, with Pat and Court's relationship, with Court um, hearing Jenny say that, you know, you'll have to do anything to protect your family. Anything. So that it kind of, it, it makes her think a little bit about the JSA, what they did, why Pat lied about it. Um, it kind of makes her maybe not totally forgive, not totally understand, but kind of gives her more insight on the decisions that they made, which can help her kind of move towards forgiving Pat or trying to just move past this, uh, this point of contention that they're at in this episode and for however many more episodes to come. So I like that. Um, just following up with, uh, with Rick, with giving Mike some stuff to do. It just gives everybody just stuff to do. It doesn't leave anybody behind. It doesn't leave anybody high and dry. It's just I love the show, just the, the way the episodes are laid out. Uh, the writers, showrunner, crew, director, editor, they're all doing a bang up job on this show. This is the best superhero show going today, bar none, period. And those are my thoughts on it, scattered as they often are. What do you guys out there think? Let me know in the comments below. Follow me, social media, talk to me there, talk to me here. Till next time, let us geek.